Real quick thing before this starts, the audio in this video is absolute garbage. For some reason, when I was recording it, um, I don't know if the audio corrupted or if I just put in the settings wrong. Something went screwy and I cannot fix it. I've tried multiple, multiple things. I've tried pretty much everything I know to do and it will not be fixed. And what I've read online is that once it's distorted, it just loses that quality and you can't get it back. So what I've done is kind of reduced it as much as I can. And um, so yeah, it's really, really hard to listen to, but I thought it was a great interview and I thought it was a great build, so I still wanted to put it up. So uh, here you go. All right, what's up everybody? We're here at Brick Fair, Chantilly, Virginia. Uh, wait a minute. We're here at Brick Fair. Well done, well done. We're here at Brick Fair, he did good. Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, and here's the convention center. There'll be a full vlog out, so if you want to check out that, you know. Uh, it's anyway, fantastic. It's amazing. It's Friday night, um, and we're here with Matthew, and he's going to show us his two best and latest and greatest builds, in my opinion. Well, um, I don't great. know about that, and they're definitely not my latest. But yes. over here, we have um, an early 1700s British Navy Brigantine, known as the Interceptor that's been captured by pi privateers, actually, not pirates. They have a little piece of paper. Uh -huh. um, and it is being hunted down by a charred East Indiaman galleon, previously known as the Wicked Wench, before it was captured and burned and renamed the Black Pearl. There you go. Um, so we kind of go into this. These ships are interesting. I've, I've never done ships before. Or sailing ships. I've done two very small scale battleships, but that was a lot different. And so this was uh, this was interesting to do. Mm -hmm. um, the Black Pearl has all 32 cannons that it has in the historical places where it was, of course. Um, it should be, I believe, it's nine on each side of the bottom and then seven, if that math doesn't add up, I'm sorry, and I did something wrong. Um, well, the Interceptor has 18, six on the bottom, and then two on the quarter deck, which is up by the wheel, or helm, sorry. Uh, so the Brigantine, once again, since the Brigantine only has two sails, and then if you look in the back, it has a turning sail. I'm sorry, I don't remember the correct name for that one, but it's it's something, and that can rotate. I promise it can. I'm not going to do it now because I'm scared of some of my having the sails because those are interesting. But uh, moving on, going back over to Black Pearl. So galleon, three masts, uh, three sails on each mast. I'm missing the um, triangle, tri triangular. There we go. Sails. There would be one in front. And then two in the middle. There would also be some on the interceptor, but not as important. And then in the back, you have the smaller sails. Uh, where, where would we like to start on this, Joshua? I think I think we uh, start, start with the deck details. Uh, the deck details. Yeah, like what's what's going on here? All right. Well, there are obviously just zoom out for one second. I know that you just told me not to do this, but uh, that they're getting ready to do a battle. They're club hauling or anchor turning. If you look right here, you can see the anchor line in the water. That's why they're at such an angle. Um, so they're getting ready to shoot at each other. Uh, go back up to the quarter deck on the Pearl. We have just a rifleman running to the side of the ship. Um, in the back, we have a World War II CB stealing navigational charts, because why not? Then we have the quarter master yelling at the two helmsmen to turn, and the captain with his monkey up top. Yes, it's very nice. Um, going down the stairs, we have the gun crews. Now, historically, there would be, I think it's like six men per gun, if not more, but that seems about right. There are only two here. There. Yeah, I was about to say. Well, unfortunately, this is about 145th scale. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have time, room, or finances to do 135th scale. Finances. Well, what, what do you, I don't have the bank capacity to enlarge this that better. Um, so there's, there's two men per gun, which in a historically accurate 100% movie, there only is two men per gun. So I mean, you can just take it from that. 
I, I promise. This is gonna sound like a really stupid question, but are these actually historical ships? Um, the Pro itself is not. Uh, East Indiaman galleons were, but the Pro itself is not. Um, the Interceptor, though, is actually funny, because the Interceptor was actually, um, oh, why can't I think of the original name of the ship? Uh, it was repainted and recut out to add more guns, but the original ship was, uh, it was an American ship that was, oh, why can't I think of it? Um, not the Liberty. <laughs> if I think of it, the Lady Washington. There we go. Sorry. It's the Lady Washington. And basically it was taken, repainted, a lot more guns added, and made into this. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, where would you like me to go now? I think we need to talk about interiors. Uh-oh. Interiors? I don't know what you're talking about. There's no interiors. I'm not taking these apart. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Which one do you want to start with? My pearl. The pearl? Really? You want to do the boring ones last? Fine, we'll do, we'll do the interceptor. Good job. Hang on, we got, we got to go up and over. They put the barricades in already. Yes. It's going to be crazy we're tomorrow. Filming we're filming this. You got two little pieces. Now, once again, this is the boring interior, because this is just the small gun deck, and then sure. and probably up the back, we have a little office area. We don't talk about that. Good job. Thank you. With a miniature of the ship. Um, I don't know right. how well we can see in there, but there's also a little map table, and then there's actually a fish bowl. It doesn't look like it, but I promise it is. Um, and that's pretty much it for the interceptor. Okay. Sorry, not as exciting. I, I know. It's very sad. But moving on to the much more menacing pearl. I'm taking off this first piece on the back of the core deck. We can see the main area of the captain's cabin where we have just a table cluttered with maps, some apples, uh, a piece of chicken, some random gold, some goblets, just you know, everything they need. And there's even a bed. It's very impressive. There's a bed where a filing cabinet should be, but we don't talk about that. So moving on. Uh, now, this is actually going to take a second, so you can ask me a question while I try to do this. So, um, how much are the, the price tag for the... I'm not answering that question. You're not answering. Um, how do I put this? Uh, the Interceptor is cheaper than the Pearl. Really? That's, yeah. that's shocking. Uh, I will tell you piece count, which is... The Pearl itself is about 3,100 pieces, while the Interceptor is about... 1500 yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's about half the size and my next and ship is going to be bigger than both of them put so together put together no wait no not quite but okay just almost almost wow. it's more than 4000 i think all right so uh assuming i did this correctly and did not forget anything which is i probably did but we're going to go with i didn't we can just kind of pull this up and, uh-oh, what, what have we here? Could it be a detailed interior? Not something Joshua never does? You heard nothing? I did not say anything. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't, don't, don't cut that out. Okay. And then, come on. They get a little stuck sometimes, but the whole thing's modular, so take that off. So we got a little brig in the back. I know, I know, it's not quite accurate, but I wanted to add it anyway. We have a captain who has mutinied the pawn and a weird fish person named Hadris who gets his head knocked off. Um, we got some supplies because why not including the key to the brig. Um, then going down here we have all the cannons. Uh, this is what they are not run out and then they actually have these little tracks so that they can't just go everywhere when I'm moving it. And then next to the cannons you'll find some of them have swabs, some of them have worms, everything you need to load, reload, um, all that. They have the touch poles up top. I'm sorry, I'm butcher. I know I don't, I don't remember half the name of these things. But uh, then here we have cannonballs, powder charges. Um, so at this time period, they were not put together yet, so they would be separate. Um, and then actually, it's hard to see right here because you only have one, but the amount of cannonballs, like if there's two, then there's only two powder charges 
over here there's four and four. I know that's kind of hard to see though. Um, unfortunately, I don't have enough minifigures at the moment, hopefully I will in the future, but to do a full lower deck, because that would be really cool. Um, if you want, I can take off the other piece. No, no, no. I but I was going to say, that one is just a pain, and it's honestly, it's nothing exciting. It's just me. It's almost, it's copy and pasting that, and then it's just a different amount of cannonballs or um, just like the armory poles or yeah, whatever you'd like to call them. This is the inside of the captain's cabin. We have the gun rack on the mast, a little globe, the bed that I was talking about where a filing cabinet should be. Um, yeah, it's not super duper exciting, but uh, it's uh, it's something. So are you good if I put this back together now? Yes. The anchors, that was another thing that was surprisingly hard. Um, just, I, I'm pretty sure I actually took this from the Lego video game. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's an Easter egg, we're gonna call it. I'm sorry. This is the dinghy. Yes. It's fantastic, it's amazing. The public will probably like it more than both of these, as we found out in the past. But, yeah. Um, if you wanna switch from me, there's some back detailing. Let me just top out of here. That been over. Oh, you saw nothing, I'm still alive, unfortunately for you, but. We have some nice little back detailing, which is uh, very nice in my personal opinion. That actually took a little bit to do, but I was pretty happy with it using that fish and the crab pieces. Matthew. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a secret one. You're not allowed to see that unless you're here in person. Um, but yeah, so. How long did these uh, take to build? So I, Designed both these in stud I own first because I'd never built a ship before and I had no idea what was going to happen. I went over this earlier, but um, so to build the pearl, it probably took about a month of designing, and then once I got all the pieces, got everything together, it only took about two days. But once again, that was just pretty straight work. Um, the interceptor probably took not quite as long as the pearl. I don't know exactly, unfortunately. But um, building it only took a couple hours. It helped that I really knew what I was doing, but also having less interior, more just easy build up. Well, it's half the pieces too. Exactly, it's half the pieces, half the size. Like it's just not quite as impressive, but them together, in my opinion, makes a lot difference of one of them being alone. Yes. But yeah. And um, about the sales, do you want to talk oh. about the sales? Well, would you like to talk about the sales or would you like me to talk about the sales? I'm talking about the sales. So uh, his dad um, did the sales. Yep. And he uh, measured the Pirates of Barracuda Bay, that one, and made it up and got all the mitts. He went out, and found a bunch of different materials, found yep. the one that was closest to the Lego sale, um, bought it, cut it. Um, the Black Pearl ones actually we did last week, but the Interceptor ones, because we couldn't find the right material to do the sales, we actually did here um, at Fredericksburg on that table. Oh, man. There might still be some pieces of the cut because it's denim, so it leaves some little shards, but um, it all went really well, and that just made a huge extra layer of detail that I yes. can't take credit for because I had no idea where to even start with that. Yes, yeah, so the sales are one of one, custom uh, done. So if you want to build this yourself, you can build all the pieces. But the sales, you're not going to be able to get. Yeah, no. sorry. Um, unless you got to make your own. But yeah, there you go. That's the mock. Any, any last things you want to say about it? Um, in the future, this mock, which I'm sure there's going to be a video on, yes. there might be a collab with a ship very similar to this one, bombarding the shoreline. Yes. Maybe, once again, this is this is like him saying there's gonna be a Civil War mock, we never the, really know. The fort. The there, fort? There's gonna be a fort on, the continuation of that mock, oh, there's yes. gonna be a fort. So it can be bombarding the fort. Yes, and um, I plan on, I'm actually working on a actual, actual historically accurate frigate, British, um, 28 gun. So that should be exciting, um, but yeah. If you want, I can put this back together and you can get some more nice yeah, shots of it. We'll do that. All but right, thank you, Matthew, for your time. Of course. And uh, keep building. <laughs> so cool. Okay.
I'll do, I'll do my best, I promise. <laughs>